new decision is keeping the battle over the Brighton Whole Foods alive. Plus, New York State versus the Trumps, the allegations in a $250 million lawsuit. A Greece grandmother charged with murder, family members saying there were no warning signs of a tragedy. A few showers and storms tonight, followed by this high pressure Friday and Saturday. You're going to like what you see up ahead in my forecast. From your breaking news and weather authority on Fox Rochester, this is 13 Wham News at 10. Tonight with some, we begin tonight with breaking news. A large police presence on Wilson Street in Rochester. This is a live look at that scene. We have reached out to police. We are waiting to hear back. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you the latest as soon as we learn more. Also tonight, it's not over. The legal battle continues over the Whole Foods Project in Brighton. The grocery store is set to open this spring, but first, a significant legal challenge by opponents has to be settled in court. Good evening. I'm Jenny Ryan. And I'm Doug Emblidge. Today, a judge set a trial date to hear the challenge, centering around the nearby Auburn Trail. And as 13 Wham's Carla Rogner reports, there have been 23 lawsuits in this case, and now one remains. Yeah, a judge will move forward to trial with a lawsuit from community members that challenges the size of the plaza. They have concerns that the grocery store would take over a public access trail nearby. As crews put the finishing touches on the Whole Foods Plaza, a Brighton resident is looking forward to a trial challenging it. A judge's decision has cleared the way. It was quite exciting and it gave us um, a lot um, of confidence that we have been fighting for six years for something that the court is now saying we have a compelling case. As head of Brighton Grassroots, Howie Jacobson has been a vocal advocate for more community input on this project. He wants to see the size of the plaza reduced so it doesn't interfere with the Auburn Trail which runs behind it. The trial will focus on whether developers need legislative approval to use the trail and whether there needs to be a town-wide vote to approve the town's decision to hand the Auburn Trail over to the developers. We want the plaza shrunk. We want a, maybe two of the buildings to come down on Monroe Avenue. We want to ease the traffic for the future of our community. The developers, the Daniele family companies, began construction in 2020, and they've leased out every building in the plaza. They could be forced to change some plans depending on the outcome of the December trial. The developers were not available for an interview, but sent a statement that reads in part, We are pleased that Justice Odorisi has dismissed all but one of the claims brought about simply to delay this project. We look forward to the December trial, where we will present the facts for why the last claim can be dismissed. And that trial will start on December 5th, just a few months before developers say the grocery store is set to open in the spring. In the newsroom, I'm Carla Rogner. All right, Carla, thank you. A Greece woman has now been charged with murdering her 72-year-old husband at their home. Police say 68-year-old Skavon Andrews shot and killed Raleigh Andrews, her husband of 40 years. It was a shock to a family member who told us the couple had a loving relationship. He just was always the fun uncle because he was younger, you know, so he was a little bit closer to our age. So he was the fun uncle, the uncle that was always around, you know, every time we had any type of family functions, always a nice guy. Never, I never seen like anger. I never seen him be upset. I've just never witnessed that with my uncle. He was, he was always just even kill all the time, the same rally all the time. A motive in this case is not yet known. For 40 years, our community has been talking about the Brighton Axe murder. And tomorrow, closing arguments are expected to begin in the trial of the only man ever charged. James Krausnick is accused of killing his wife, Kathleen, with an axe in their Brighton home. The defense has been trying to establish reasonable doubt. A former neighbor testified today about seeing someone in a ski mask running slowly near the Krausnick home on the day of the murder. A new report by the state attorney general confirms the death of a woman and a Rochester police sergeant in March was a murder-suicide. 
The report finds Sergeant Melvin Williams murdered Janet Jordan in her home on Wetmore Park and then took his own life. He was found dead in his car at a park in Henrietta. A 20-year-old man is facing charges of reckless endangerment after police say he put students and police in danger this afternoon in Webster. It happened near R.L. Thomas High School. Police say a man on a dirt bike was weaving in and out of traffic on Publishers Parkway and Hard Road, swerving in front of cars, nearly hitting school buses. The driver also went into the parking lot at the Willink Middle School while students were being dismissed. Police arrested Xavier De Leon of Rondequoit after they say he tried to flee from police on foot. Tonight, a Rochester firefighter honored for his life-saving work has died. Elvis Reyes was recognized for his work after Hurricane Sandy and his rescue of two people in a 2009 structure fire. He died from surgery complications. Turning to the weather now, there's a live look at uh, downtown from the HD WAM cam, and Scott is with us to uh, talk about what we can expect for the first full night of fall tomorrow. Yeah, fall's not that far away, but we're just 24 hours from it, so the last hours of summer acting like summer. Let's have a look at radar right now and off to the west. We got a couple of storms popping, finally, some storms developing, but they are far away from the metro about uh 118 miles that's a few hours and we'll watch these storms to see if they develop this is one guy that is interesting to watch being propelled by strong winds we'll see if it becomes a storm of interest over the, the overnight hours it all has to do with a front approaching over eastern michigan right now it's starting to plow its way through so overnight yes there could be a couple of showers and gusty thunderstorms in the area i think the risk of any real issues is pretty low at this point but not zero at the bus stop early we're out there and we're cool brisk mid 50s by the afternoon mid 50s yeah not a big change tomorrow and that cool air is sticking around for a while doug we will have that for you in the forecast coming up in a few and a win for the justice department in its investigation of documents seized from the mar-a-lago home of Donald Trump, an appeals court has cleared the way for the DOJ to immediately resume use of those seized documents as it tries to determine whether to bring charges against the former president. A lower court previously barred access to the documents in order to give an appointed special master time to independently review them. On Capitol Hill, a major step toward election reform and blunting future challenges to presidential elections. Legislation passed by the House clearly spells out how states and Congress certify electors and declare presidential winners. And it closes loopholes that former President Trump and his aides tried to exploit in 2020. A similar bill is now going through the Senate. The House committee investigating the January 6th insurrection will interview the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Ginny Thomas has voluntarily agreed to the interview. The committee wants to speak with her because she sent dozens of text messages to Trump's former White House chief of staff, urging him to fight the results of the 2020 election. President Biden is standing firm against threats from Russian President Putin. In a speech today, Putin called up 300,000 reservists to bolster their forces in the war in Ukraine. He voiced support for annexing regions of Ukraine and threatened to protect Russian interests with any means available, including hinting at nuclear weapons. Speaking to the U.N. today, President Biden condemned Putin's remarks. This war is about extinguishing Ukraine's right to exist as a state, plain and simple, and Ukraine's right to exist as a people. Whoever you are, wherever you live, whatever you believe, that should not, that should make your blood run cold. Putin's move sparking protests across Russia, leading to dozens of arrests. Also today, two American veterans who were held by Russian forces in Ukraine are now free. Their release was part of a prisoner swap between Russia and Ukraine today. Still ahead, the baby formula crisis, what the FDA says it got wrong. Plus, Hurricane Fiona reached Category 4 strength, where it's heading tonight. And next, New York suing Donald Trump, the claims being made, and why criminal charges are also possible. Thursday morning, a look at some of the weekend's fringe festival shows.